Welcome back to the Wolf of Queen Street. Welcome back to the YouTube series or the audio podcast if you joined us today. Just before we get going, today's episode is brought, by, brought to you by the Dark Heart Grooming Company, Skincare for Men, only using organic, honest, New Zealand native ingredients. And you can find them on the Dark Heart Grooming Co. on Instagram. And next time you place your order, just put in Wolf10 on the checkout to get 10% discount. But today, I'm joined by a gentleman called Joe Durrani. I actually met Joe only about three weeks ago at the UPW as part of the crew. And uh, this guy's passion and power and everything that he was doing as part of the team and everyone around him made it enjoyable, made it inspiring and motivating to be around him and see what he had to do. The interesting thing which we just spoke about is when I got home and then realizing what a lot of these 300 crew members actually did in their day life. Joe is a property investment specialist. He's something that I saw on your blurb and that is called a wealth creation specialist. I quite like that line. And he's also running a program at the moment is how to build a multi-million dollar property portfolio in less than 10 years. And he's providing all the insights, the ticks, the tricks and the tips and everything else of how a normal person giving himself the right amount of time can get himself in the right location or set up from a property investments. And I'm really excited about this as a guy that loves property myself to have this discussion with Joe. And Joe, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Lawrence. And I appreciate you uh, having me on this uh, podcast. It's amazing. Love what you do. Great. I um, just also just forgot to say that Joe's also the company is running his Ample Property Solutions and he's the CEO of that company and with what everything he's offering at the moment. So Joe... I read through a bit of your information and taking it back like sort of 10 plus years ago, your starting point was, or some of the points of your learning was, your parents had unfortunately a major crisis in the, uh, in the GFC and they got hit by something hard in 2008. Can you take us through sort of what happened at that moment? Because the way I read it, that was the stepping stone of getting you on the path of where you are today and a lot of what you're offering the people in the public. Uh, absolutely. So, um, it's hard actually going back uh, that far again, <laughs> but, uh, I, I definitely agree that, uh, 2008, 2009, that GFC, uh, when it did come, uh, it was the biggest blessing in disguise. I didn't mm -hmm. know it at the time, yeah. <laughs> um, cause you, you're so in the moment and in the midst of things and in the midst of life. Um, however, I do want to say something so that it's not just the, the stepping stone. It wasn't at that pivotal moment then and there until about a couple of years after that, because yeah. I was only 18 years of age at the time, um, eldest of six kids and had a lot of pressure on me in and around that, you know, I'm the role model. I'm the leader. You know, this has all been passed down from mum and dad that, you know, I have to set the right example for mm -hmm. my siblings. But what was, when that happened, I automatically reverted to the victim card. Mm -hmm. And that's the honest truth. That's exactly what happened at the start. I, I saw my mum and dad who had built everything from nothing, you know, coming to Australia back in uh, the early 80s. So they come from nothing and they have built this beautiful, you know, family home. This, they built this beautiful family of six kids, businesses and houses. And then when that happened, I just see them fall flat on their face mm -hmm. and I automatically reverted to, you know, it's because of this, it's because of them. I pointed the finger and I blamed everyone else, but didn't point the finger back at us. Not, not, not so much to my father, even just to myself. Yeah. You know, so, and just to explain a little bit further, obviously 2008 being what's it, 11 years from now and any of the listeners that's a little bit younger and, and not paying as much attention, we're talking about the global financial crisis, 2008, the last time the world went into recession. Uh, we're pretty close on there at the moment, but let's not go down that path. And it uh, impacted everyone, especially on this side of New Zealand, um, not as much. Australia was quite large impacted and it was a bit more delayed, as you said, sort of 2009, was it really started impacting um, this side of the world compared to 2008 in the American space. So going right. through it, um, as you said, is you had that mentality of, you know, it's not me or it's not us or it's not the way it is and pointing, uh, pointing outwards, not saying, okay, what can we address? What can we change? So what changed over those couple of years period to, to finally put yourself in the right sense? And then what did you, you know, build from that in that framework to, uh, to, to now? Yeah, absolutely. It's a long story. Um, <laughs> and I've actually got a book out there. It's called, um, it's just the beginning. Um, yeah. you know, co-authored, uh, 
with myself and uh, Mike Williams. Um, please check it out. Uh, it, that shares the whole story, mm-hmm. but not to go into too much detail now because yep. you know I don't want to take too much out of your time today. The, the, the biggest thing I'd done was it, instead of pointing the finger out and blaming others and blaming this and the other, yep. I suddenly started to ask the question, well, why? Why did this happen? Mm-hmm. Why is this happening? Why is this happening to us? Why me? Yeah. Once I started to do that, I started to question my existence. Mm-hmm. I started to question, ask myself, you know, well, why am I on this earth? Why, why am I even here? to suffer, to, to do this, or is it to face all these ridiculous, you know, um, external circumstances? What, what is this? What is this life? Why am I here? And that started uh, around late 2009, early 2010. And I started to dive into what we all know now as personal development. Yeah. I started to reach for answers, seek for different opportunities, seek for things that, you know, What's going to better me? How can I be the best version of me? Mm-hmm. And I come across a book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, yes. as, as you probably are aware. <laughs> and, and your listeners, I'm sure, would be listening to, you know, if they listen to podcasts like this, then they're obviously looking at books like that in personal development space. And from there, uh, it was asking the question about, you know, define your definiteness of purpose. Yep. And I found mine. Once I started to ask deeper and deeper and mine, if, if you don't mind me sharing is to, positive, is to positively empower, yep. inspire and positively impact over a million people's lives around Australia and around the globe, showing them that anything is possible with the right mindset, with mm-hmm. the right philosophies and with the right people that they surround themselves with. Yeah, that's amazing, amazing message, brother. And I absolutely love that. That's, you know, you through your personal development, you've seen what you want to do and you want to empower, you want to motivate and you want to put people in the right position by providing everything that you've learned and everything that you're offering to give it to them as well. And um, I take my hat off and I say a big thank you for doing that because it's people like yourself and everyone else in that sort of space that does that and allows the people today and the people tomorrow to become better versions by bouncing ideas, getting mentorship, getting coaching or getting leadership uh, from the likes of yourself. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate that comment. So uh, obviously at the moment uh, in the modern times with ample ample property solutions, um, a wealth creation specialist in the property investment game and that sort of stuff. You, like I said, is you currently running a program to show people how they can over 10 years time have a property investment property, a portfolio of, you know, multi-million dollars, anything else. As a property owner myself and a property investor myself of multiple properties and, and have done that over years and years, one thing I find is the biggest challenge, and I'm sure it's the same challenge you find in your space and not just from the tools that you offer is someone comes to you and goes, I want to own three houses, but I want to own them this year. I want to own two houses, but I want to own them in the next six months or, you know, not given the opportunity, the time for the opportunity for it to grow and to buy the houses, you know, because you can't just, unless you're making a very high income or a lot of um, equity or cash to use, it takes sort of the period of time to go, okay, one and then leverage or equity or cash to the second one. And it's likely like sort of a five year gap between one and two. But then it's a three year gap. Then it's a two year. Then it's a three year gap between two and three, and then that becomes smaller and smaller. So that's something you that's see right. quite common with people coming in into your office. One hundred percent, and and uh, you nailed it uh, there. Uh, you know, because you said it's either one they have high income, or two they have a high deposit or equity or yeah. cash to play with. It's not one or the other anymore, as you know. Mm-hmm. The banks now are very, very much getting tighter and you know, scrutinizing the lending, um, you know, field. However, you have to have one and the other now. Yeah. So you need to have a good income and minimum expenses, but at the same time, um, you know, have a great deposit as well. And then that you need to have uh, the right team behind you to help you strategize over a period of time because everybody's circumstances are different. Mm -hmm. Everybody's financially in a different place. And, you know, some people are about, you know, I want to invest in four properties in the next 12 months. And some are, hang on, let's, let's come back. Let's rewind. Let's see where we can actually realistically, you know, get you to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and what what type of opportunity? Yeah, totally. I mean, 
the the tool sets that's offered from a company like yourself and a few other um, companies out there, what makes it more unique is the actual correct message that you guys offer, right? And and, and I can see that through your social media to anyone else that's um, thinking about an Australian space of property and property investments, please uh, look up Joe. His social media, the content that he provides, free of charge, all out there is amazing. And I can see through that you're saying the right message and not saying, hey, come in to me and I want to just get your customer to click my ticket and, and, and so forth. Because there's also another challenge that I've seen with a lot of people I've speaking, spoken to in the property space is you get young first-time home buyers, right? Sort of, let's say, 17 if they're exceptionally lucky, but sort of that 19 to 24-year-old space. But then also it's the understanding of we want to own a home or make it, let's call it investment, even though it's an home, a home first. But sometimes the guidance could be, why don't you buy the house as an investment and rent where you want to live? You've got that sort of space of, you know, I've said to a lot of people, you can't sometimes afford the house in the neighborhood you want to live in, but you've got money to buy a house. So why keep saving for another five years? Why not invest it? Get into the market. Get into the market. Get on that ladder because in a bank's eyes, once you're on the ladder, you don't have to worry with the shit that's underneath that step of getting that first mortgage and everything else. Is that something as well that you, that you see and also guide on depending on when people come in or going, I want to buy my first home, but it needs to be in the most expensive suburb, you know, in the city. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of reasons why that happens. A lot of people buy properties with, with emotions where we yeah. take the full emotion out of it. We educate our clients that it's all numbers based. It's mm -hmm. all a rational decision. It all has to make risk calculated sense. You know, it, it, it's, it has to add up. Yep. Now, I'm actually, uh, uh, you're talking to the converted here. I actually am a rent vesta, as we call them. That's yep. the funky term that's going right now. That's cool. The rent vesta. Yes, yes, yes. So I've got, you know, multiple uh, properties at the moment as a portfolio, but I'm renting where I want to live because it's yep. near the school that I want my kids to be in and so on and so forth. And they're the reasons that I actually share my experience with people and say, hey, I could have I could have bought a property in Sydney, for example, right, with the money mm -hmm. that I had at the time when I started. I could have bought a property in Sydney, but I would not be able to purchase the property that I am currently living in. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I actually bought two properties with that same amount of money outside of Sydney, yep. interstate. And currently we've got, um, you know, two properties in Brisbane and one in Melbourne and one in Newcastle. And all of them are absolutely, you know, working really well for me. In fact, we're actually looking at our fifth investment property within the space of five years. Yep, and that's all because I saw the power in property investing. I really didn't thoroughly understand it when I first started. I really had to go back because it's a traditional way of thinking, as you probably are aware, mm -hmm. uh, Lawrence, that it's, you know, go get a good job, get married and buy your first home yep. to live in. And but paid off the days. Yeah, and paid off as quickly as you can. I pay it off as quickly as you can yeah. before you even look at yeah. building a property portfolio. And, yeah. and don't get me wrong, property investing and portfolio building has not just been around, you know, for the last five years. It's been around for, you know, centuries. Yeah. So totally. it's taking that advice, sorry, Lawrence, and implementing it and definitely not doing it on your own because that's where a lot of people make the mistakes. They're, they're emotionally getting into the market and mm -hmm. the fear of missing out and all of that, which is unfortunately where a lot of people go wrong. I totally agree with that. I mean, even myself, I take guidance from elsewhere. We, I have brokers. I've got people that guide me. I can imagine you the same. It's the same in any sort of part of life. When you go and buy a car, when you go and buy any sort of commodity or anything that you can use or an investment, you don't just walk up and say, I want that one. Because, you know, and, and think you know everything. You know, you, you, you need to take guidance from the the brokers understanding from a property, your lawyers and everything else, and having that whole team in tell to tell you, hey, by the way, have you thought of in this property because you don't realize there's a flood zone that's just behind it? Have you realized that there's a, a future expectation that they're going to put a motorway through it or around the corner and stuff like that? You're never going to know that unless you have the right teams around that as well. And something you just said earlier is something very similar to what Grant Cardone lives by, and I'm sure you're a big Grant Cardone fan, and how he does it, and you know, he doesn't own his, I uh, think he, he owns it now, but it's not really the way he wants to do his family home. And the sense of don't, as I said, pay off all your, pay off all your mortgage as what we're told in the old ways. Get a house, get your mortgage, spend 30 years and pay it off as quickly as you can. 
but fundamentally the dollars once you get to a certain point every dollar you pay in on that mortgage is a dollar you could actually be investing over a year because Absolutely. that hundred thousand dollars you're paying off for your mortgage in five years is still only worth a hundred thousand dollars in five years time but that hundred thousand dollars that you could have been paying on your on your personal home or paying more on your personal home instead of putting it into investment you know, putting a deposit down could be two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars. So it's absolutely it's breaking down that model of a lot of the people that's coming through sort of the first time home buyers that are late. So late in the, the sort of late twenties, early thirties challenging Australia, just like New Zealand, is very expensive for housing within the cities. Exceptionally high. Um, most times it's five to eight times or even I think some of them at some stages are ten to fifteen times um, average income in that area. So it's quite expenses trying to afford it absolutely and that's when the real emotions because they're like i want to get in i've got to get in i've got to get my mortgage and it's like well 20k is that way it's half the price uh you could be pretty close to breaking even and therefore sit on it for five years keep renting and buy the next one 100 percent. i think the key term here if you don't mind me uh, adding yep. in here is the term leverage okay and, and the all the whole essence of that word the way we look at it is well, just just for um, you know listeners' point of view and give them a different perspective. Uh, leverage is minimum input from one end for maximum output on the other end. Mm -hmm. You're getting maximum leverage in property investing and, in fact, in every other you know area of your life. But you know, to the core of property, the four pillars of leverage are utilizing and leveraging other people's time, mm -hmm. utilizing and leveraging other people's experience utilizing and leveraging other people's experiences and other people's money ultimately and when i take my clients through this journey of understanding the numbers understanding leverage i also you know instill a belief and a perception or a new belief about how property investing actually is hmm. to me it's a business yeah and i'll share this with you because i think it's valuable but imagine looking to invest in some sort of business mm -hmm. where and this is a different point of view this is the different perspective that i'm sharing with you is where would you be able to find a business partner that will be able to lend you 90 percent of, of an investment opportunity and you keep 100 percent of the growth of that opportunity mm -hmm. yeah, there's it's not gonna nothing happen. else out there but the banks are willing to do that yeah. so the way i look at it is it's a business partnership with the bank Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, you know, I totally agree with that. When I bought uh, what would be six years ago, I think it was a f my first time I bought my second property. So I became an investor, right? I think it's been about six or seven years since I bought that first one, uh, well my done. second property, sorry. And I remember we sat in there because it was our first investment property. Myself and the wife were ecstatic. And now we, you know, we had to, we had to do a renovation because we'd normally renovate to, on, to rent um, is the yes, sort of way yes. we go into that space. And we sit down there, okay, okay, we're going to have open homes for the next couple of weekends to find out to get us uh, get tenants in there. So we have people coming through and coming through and coming in the applications. And then we've got, we've got X amount of application, what it was. And the wife was there. And then this young couple came in and 19 year old guy and 19 year old girl. And they really, you know, lovely. They're trying to get ahead in life and trying to work and everything. And we sat in the week and the wife goes, I just want to give them the opportunity because they're working really hard. And in my mind said, Hey, you're someone else. I'd rather give it to because from a numbers and a pure business point of view, this would make sense, right? Absolutely. But no, from the emotion side, this makes the emotion side, this made sense. And unfortunately the emotion is going to get you in trouble. So, so it ends Absolutely. up being that the wife sitting around and said, no, I'm going to step away because otherwise emotionally I'm going to make, we're going to make a decision and make a Absolutely. business sense. And we always made sure we made a business sense in sense of someone that would come in, that would always pay the rent. That wasn't a risk of a, a miss rent or anything else. And the, the perception was that they would be there longer term. They wouldn't have to shift tenants every twelve months, eighteen months, three years, or something. That's like right. That. And the people right. that the people that are that went in then are still in there now, almost seven years later. Wow. Well, there you go. So, and, and unfortunately, our emotional uh, when we when we seek to our emotions for a decision, we end up usually nine times out of ten making a poor decision. Mm -hmm. when it comes to things like investing yep. i mean when it's all about love and relationships <laughs> absolutely you know that's that's what you need <laughs> that's yeah. the essence that's the core uh, ingredient
No, totally. Uh, and I can imagine, so with your, your, with your business at the moment in Australia, you guys push around all of Australia. Is it anything further outside of that space or is it fundamentally Australian-based property insights? At the moment, it's uh, Australia-wide. Uh, I would love, 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 love to, you know, go outside and become international. I think there's so much opportunity, especially in NZ. Yep. Um, uh, there's opportunities in Indonesia, believe it or not. And I'm, I'm actively looking at different opportunities, villa opportunities over yep. there. And also the States. Uh, I think there's an up, untapped market that the Australian population, and even myself, but before I get to be able to get to, how do I say, advertise and recommend and market, I need to make sure that I can do that too because I practice what we preach. Yeah, totally. Um, I, the American market is always, no matter what field you're in, I don't care if it's retail or what you're selling, what you're doing, what you're offering, American market to an Australian and even more to New Zealander, there's always going to be more opportunity. It's a hundred times, it's a hundred times bigger than Australia. It's, What's it? Uh, not a hundred times. It's ten times bigger than Australia. It is seventy times bigger than New Zealand. Uh, the American space. So every opportunity that you get there, you you get the same. But you also see a, a large fluctuation on pricing. Your dollar could buy so much more in America. I sit down and I can imagine you do the same as well. And you're watching property programs in America. And for three hundred thousand dollars, this guy's buying a monstrosity of a house somewhere in America and I sit there pulling my hair out going, you know, for three hundred thousand dollars I can't even buy a one square meter piece of grass in Auckland because the average yeah. check, <laughs> the average section price in Auckland is something like six hundred five hundred and six hundred thousand dollars just for a piece of land. And yet yeah. over in the American market you can get so much more and it's funny because we actually saw that in myself and my um, business partner in the on the property side. We almost got caught into it. We went to Florida uh three years ago, took the kids to Disney World went to Florida, stayed in this property estate, 2,000 houses, property estate, gated community, in an eight-bedroom house, beautiful place, owed swimming pool and everything else. And while we were there for five days, because it was between different parks, there was a show home for this uh, developer. It was one developer for 2,000 houses. So you can imagine wow. this, guy, this guy making a bit of money, right? Yes, so that, yes. But they had the open home that day. So I said to my mate, I said, hey, let's, the wives are happy, the kids in the pool, Let's go for half an hour and go look into this house. And it was literally a yeah. block away. So walk in there and it was so crazy because we walked in and the guy goes, okay, what do you want to see? A single family home and it's eight bedrooms or you want to see a multiple family home and it's nine bedrooms. And I'm sitting myself going, eight bedrooms, nine bedrooms. This is just ridiculous. And the size of the house. And then you look at the numbers and you look back to the New Zealand numbers and we're like, holy, holy shit, you know, straight off the back. Even if, if you could cover the cost to get the house, it was positively geared from day one, not even day 200 or two or three or four years later. It was positively geared straight away off the bat. So we day one. There, day one. We sat there. I can still remember it vividly. I had an A4 piece of paper. I had the kids' crayons calculating out all the expenses and all the running costs and everything and worked out the number. And we sat there for actually for a few days and in contact with the guy a few weeks after we got back to make sure it wasn't an emotional purchase that we took our time to look at it. And, and only due to a specific reason we didn't go ahead with it because at that stage we didn't want to tie up that amount of cash overseas where New, Zealand, where New Zealand Bank wouldn't recognize it. So while we're doing property here. But yeah. Like you said, there's definitely those opportunities in the right markets to look in any country. Absolutely. And, and eventually that's what we'd love to tap into, definitely, because um, we believe in opportunities. We believe in, you know, sourcing the best of the best from the best, wherever from, you know, whatever part of the world. Yeah. But at the moment, we're specializing in Australia so we can conquer that um, and dominate that, uh, that space um, and help a lot of people um, secure their financial future through that. So are you, someone coming into your door, are you just helping the person that comes in and goes, yeah, I've, I've, got, the, I've got the money or I've got the equity that I want to leverage, um, tell me what I should be doing or what I'm doing the right buying, or, or, and, or are you doing as well as someone goes, hey, I've got a million dollars, what's the best way to make this work for me? And you might say, hey, here's three houses, <laughs> here for a million dollars at these three locations. Are you doing sort of both, both spaces? Okay, so we uh, offer a very holistic um, end-to-end -end service, start mm -hmm. to finish. Um, a lot of our clients are very new uh, to, to this space, to this whole 
investment world. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of education that we go through for that. So just to give you an example, somebody that, you know, comes to one of our seminars, basically they're learning that, hey, this is what property can do for you. And the service that we provide is that we take you through that journey from start to finish. Mm -hmm. We will one, look at where you are financially today. Two, look at your you know, current financial circumstances or what you're able to do. Three, where you want to go in the next five, 10, 15 or 20 years, depending yep. on your age and your circumstance. And then uh, where I'm up to four, let's see if we can you know, build that bridge. Mm -hmm. Yep. and you know bridge the gap so to speak from where they are now to where they want to be uh, and that entails one finding out how much you know they can borrow two what are the best locations that are going to best fit their circumstances mm -hmm. three then we source the particular property from these locations and actually go through a diligent uh, and thorough reach research both micro and macro so we're not just looking at from the outside, we're looking in depth to the research. Then we introduce them to everybody that's involved. For example, your brokers, your uh, solicitors, your you know, um, builders and developers, the, the properties, the property managers, um, the quantity surveyors. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah. And we hold your hand through that whole process. We liaise with everybody so that we can give you the peace of mind of investing in property. I mean, I'm sure you know that there's a lot that is involved. There's a lot of moving parts and mechanics that are involved when investing. Yeah. I had a client okay. today, I had a client this morning, actually, she called me up and she said, you know, we, we choose X, Y, Z. And I said, I've got great congratulations. And she said, but can I say something? And I said, sure thing, you know, go ahead. She said, you're making it too easy. <laughs> and I said, that's what I want. Yeah. Let us, take over the stress and you just look after your day-to-day -day thing. You do you, we yeah. do us. Yeah. You're an expert in your field. We're an expert in this. So let us look after all of that for you. And you know, you continue doing what you're good at. I, I totally agree with that. I see it all the time of, and people unfortunately not say nasty, but people have a dislike to it. They go, Oh, that guy's made it so easy. He's, you know, he's got money and he can buy houses, you know, just from examples. But it's not that he's got it easy or he's got a lot of money. He's just knowing the smart, whether he's using a company like yourself or through that process, he's learned it, that uh, to do the simple steps and having the right people around you to be make those, those choices easier. If you said to a first time buyer, okay, you're going to go into a house, spend, spend a million dollars on, on an investment property, gave them a million dollars to say, would you spend, spend it? They wouldn't have a clue what to look at, what to talk to, what to do with with that money, you know, is a million dollars is a million dollars the right price to sell? What's the expectation of the price in eighteen months to what it was eighteen months before, and and the future development in school zones and and so forth? But it's absolutely it's the guys that understand like companies like yourself and that they make it easier. And once people realise that, they'll be more willing to come to you and go, "Hey, Joe, can I have five minutes of your time? Can I have twenty minutes of your time to discuss what we're trying to do?" And absolutely, I, and I try to say to people, go and talk to someone that knows. Because fundamentally, you're always going to be better off. You're never going to be worse off talking to the right company about being an investment property, buying an investment, irrespective of what you're buying. Use that mentorship Absolutely. that's on offer. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I mean, I, I have it in my purpose and, and, and that is to be impacted, to, to be the best version of yourself, to have the success that you desire and that you want one of the core ingredients is to surround yourself with the people that have what you want mm -hmm. or doing what you want to do. Yep. Uh, and that's the ultimate leverage and the ultimate key to sort of having the success that you want. Yep. Totally agree with that, man. And so before, you know, without going into too much um, and too much further forward here, giving away all your secrets, obviously all your trade secrets, no, everything no, else. No. We've, you know, we've got, been going for 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, keep it nice and short today. And I know you're a busy man and uh, thank you, family thank you. to get to. Give me sort of a two or three minute segment of what you think you should leave the listeners with and sort of an ins a last insight to drop to say for them to consider tonight or tomorrow or the next few days as they listen into this about what they're doing around their property space or their property investment. Great question. Okay. Um, what? is my advice okay firstly is 
grab a snapshot of where you are today. So for example, work out for yourself. And, and I have this as a formula and I'm happy to share this with your listeners. If ever anybody wants it, mm-hmm. I can send you a PDF and they can fill this out. But what, what we call it is called a financial freedom formula. This will ultimately give you a snapshot of where you are today. So for example, you know, your age, um, you know, when, when is your desired retirement time? You know, is it 40? Is it 45? Is it 60? Working out how much you're going to need through your retirement years. So for example, for some people, the average couple would want, you know, a hundred thousand dollars per annum Mm -hmm. after taxes to maintain and sustain their current lifestyles. You know, adding all of those up with their current retirement provisions, such as, you know, the super fund that they have, the savings that they may have, then work out based on the amount of money I, I would like to have. And from the time that I retire till, you know, there's no expiry date, but let's just aim for say 20 years after we retire, working out what that number is minus in it, minus in what you currently have, that there will give you what your next egg should look like over yep. the next five, 10, 15 years. Mm-hmm. And the average, and I'll just share this with, uh, with everybody out there, the average couple to retire today, quoted by Mark Boris and the likes, is $1.6 million. Cash. So that's already... That's 1.6 cash, right? Yes, that you need <laughs> yeah. to be able to sustain and maintain your lifestyles till the end of your days. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the biggest thing is, okay, what am I doing? What vehicle am I investing in? That's going to help me create that wealth because let's face it, you know, even people that are on two, three hundred thousand dollars a year aren't saving, you know, mm-hmm. two or three thousand dollars, four thousand dollars a week. Yeah. Great. So, what can I invest in minimum investment for maximum output? I mean, property is a well-known fact that, especially in Australia and New Zealand, I'm 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 I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure it's six point eight percent average uh, of growth over fifteen years. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you should take advantage of that. You know, I show people that, you know, you can invest uh, in, a, in a property for less than $50 a week. In actual fact, it should put in your pocket $50 a week. Mm-hmm. So how do we leverage that and then set myself up with a strategy? I think that's the best sort of advice. <laughs> and then the last thing is, the last thing is, is definitely reach out for advice. And I'm humble enough to say it's not going to always be my company, but yeah. please seek out guidance and um and mentorship through an organization that have the success and are doing what you would like to do and get the support and help from them you'll know if you're going to gel with them or not awesome but that will give you the that that'll be the ultimate key awesome joe that's um that's great tip in there in the sense of you know for people to understand that missing delta you know where we are now we want to be at that stage and, and having a realization of what that in the middle is actually, what that number is. Because you say to someone, are oh, you going to board to retirement? And not having an understanding going, hey, it's not $100,000. It's not $200,000. It's a million at least and more, you know, and everything else. And then going, okay, what's the best way? As you said, reverse engineering it. What's the best way in 20 years, 15 years or 10 years for me to get to that path? And by using with my numbers and then going, okay, if I get into a property and I get my 6.8% on average over 15 years, my dollar will be doing this over that 15 years compared to nothing else, really, realistically. Absolutely. There's no other you know, investment vehicle out there that's strong enough that will give them that, that type of return like property. Mm-hmm. And uh, you hit the nail on the head. We do reverse engineer everything, mm-hmm. even from the properties that we select, we you almost dissect it to the sense yeah. of, what this property will ultimately, you know, cost me and what's my returns. And, you know, um, it's one of the biggest eye openers that, that, uh, we see a lot of our clients going, Whoa, I have never ever put <laughs> these numbers to paper or pen to paper to work out what it is that I am working towards or need to work towards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, t- I totally agree. With that. And thanks so much, Joe, for that and those insights. Before we end off um, the episode today, Joe, can you let the listeners know where they can find yourself um, and the company as well and the details and your social handles? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Lawrence. Uh, before I do that, I really, really do appreciate you having me on your podcast. I think you're an amazing human doing some incredible things. And, uh, you know, I'd love for, for everybody to keep following you. And, and I can't wait to share this podcast with uh, my group. Yeah, awesome. Um, 
Thank you, Joe www.amplepropertysolutions.com.au. That's our website. Uh, you can find most of um, our content on uh, our Facebook pages. So you can either look up Joe Durrani. Um, so J O E D I R A N I. Uh, that's, I've got a fan page there or a public figure page as well as my, my uh, normal account. But then you can also jump onto Ample Property Solutions uh, Facebook page uh, as well as. Um, I'm pretty sure it's uh, underscore Joe dot Durrani. That's my Instagram handle. Would love to you, uh, you know, to have you guys jump on and follow and and follow our, um, you know, uh, our content there. Awesome, thanks, Joe, and thanks so much for the kind words before. And um, I'm like I said before, I'm honestly privileged to have you on the show um, to see what your message was. As I said, we met just only about three, four weeks ago, and seeing someone in a space of where he's happy to be. And where we both were happy to be, you forget about the rest of the world and then coming back into it and, <laughs> and, and understanding. There was moments where me and Joe were running around like crazy and we were coordinating certain things and Joe was telling me what to do and I was telling Joe what to do and there was bongo drums and oh, just chaos. But anyway, that's for anyone. You, you, was, know, what, you know what my favorite moment was though? <laughs> what was that? When we, had, when we had that lineup and you went through and got your hands clapped by everybody yeah. and then I wanted to copy you and I got in trouble, not you. <laughs> so that just, was my favourite part. Just explain it what so obviously we're talking about the UBW crew. You've got seven thousand people trying to enter an event on the day two, three and also on the day no day four we did something different. But day two and three we had about a fifty crew members line up with their hands up and as the people come in then they were either given given high fives or going through a tunnel, just building up their states, right? Picking up their state and everything else. So as Joe said, I ran through and unfortunately in the venue we weren't supposed to run. So by the time Joe came along, <laughs> <laughs> Joe got picked out and said, don't do that. So yeah. But don't, anyway. don't, don't run. Yeah. It was an amazing, amazing, it was an run. absolute blessing and honor to, to meet you, my friend. And I'm very blessed to call you a friend. Oh, thank you so much, Joe. Um, and just end of today, to everyone else that's listening or watching on the on the podcast, thank you again for joining in today. You know where to find us, The Wolf of Queen Street. You can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and on YouTube. Um, by all means, please have a listen, have a share, have a like, and have a subscribe. But have a beautiful and powerful day. And again, until next time, see you.